I have the pleasure of speaking with Jack Lipton. How are you today, Jack? I'm fine, Tracy. Thank you. How are you? I'm very, very good. I'm going to start first with that rumor that we had that we placed on our site from Hong Po, where he talks about a new heavy rare earth potential tax from the Chinese. Yep. We haven't yep. had anything like this since 2011. Of course, the markets went crazy. Talk to me about this. Do you think this is real? Yes, I do. It's, it's the way that China has resolved the issue of how to conserve and protect its very limited rare, heavy rare earth resources, which are so important. This is not a surprise to me. Uh, we did it to ourselves. We made a big fuss about quotas and this and that. And the Chinese have just reviewed their history of Western capitalism. They said, oh, all we need to do is put a big export tax on. That's that's OK. So they did it. Uh, look, they've been looking for a way to do this for four years. They will now do it. OK, if they're going to do what they did in 2011, everybody should get ready for a very busy Christmas day, because I believe they put that news out in 2011 on Christmas. So yeah. jumping next to other news, we've had a lot of big news in the market. Um, of course, UCOR put out their, you know, revolutionary, uh, what is it, molecular recognition technologies. Now, I'm just, right. a, I'm just an investor. I don't know what an MRT is. I need you to talk to me about that. Well, I don't, I don't want to put you to sleep, but let's say that molecular recognition and technology it is basically um, a way of separating uh, metals from each other uh, by uh, utilizing uh, chemicals, organic chemicals, that selectively uh, bind to one or another, and then uh, they can be separated, and they can be then uh, re relieved of their burden of the specific metals. Now, what I'm, tr I'm, what I'm saying is there's no way to explain this in a few moments and to people who don't have the particular background. Just let me say this. All separation technologies are the same. They're trying to separate things from, from each other that are closely related chemically. In the case of the rare earths, they're the most closely related long string of elements in the periodic table. Very difficult to separate from each other. It can be done. It's very expensive. The thrust of MRT, continuous ion exchange, accelerated solvent extraction, all of these technologies that are now underway is to lower the cost. The technology is to accomplish the same thing, separating the rare earths. It's the cost that's always been the issue, the enormous cost. I believe that we will see now in the next year to year and a half scale up of one or more of these technologies rocketing down the cost and completely changing the landscape for junior rare earth companies. Okay, that's one position, and I'm not yes. discounting it, but I did just speak to a top expert from Texas just last week. He said, Tracy, all these companies are living in a fantasy world. Okay, they're living in a fantasy world because the only people that know how to extract rare earths are the Chinese. Okay, the Chinese know what they're doing. These new technologies cannot compete. Back at you, Jack. Can they compete? Yes. Uh, actually, I just offered to speak at the... Uh, Association of Chinese Rare Earth Industries Conference in Shanghai next April, I think it is, on new North American-based technologies for separating the rare earths at less cost. Now, they haven't answered yet. I just did that this morning. Let's see what they think about so they've solved all the problems and don't have to worry about it. I'll let you know next time we talk what their response is. And of course, for all of our Investor Intel audience out there, as you know, I'm a major proponent for the support of uh, rare earths outside of China and sustainability issues. And speaking of that, we had big news uh, geopolitically last week with the free trade agreement between Australia and China. Now, mm -hmm. I believe that is going to be a substantial uh, lift for ASX listed companies in the rare yes. earth and resource sector. But what do you think, Jack? Oh, I, I think that was extremely good news for companies like Alkane, Northern Minerals, Arafura, the companies that are, are very far along in the development of their uh, rare earth resources. Because, quite frankly, the, the Chinese did, aren't about to raise the taxes sky high in selected rare earths that happen to also be available from uh, Australia if, they, if they're not looking for to conserve those rares and acquire them. 
That's the big thing, acquire. The Chinese are out in the world very seriously looking at investing in projects that they believe can help them themselves. They have put a lot of money in Greenland minerals lately. Uh, they're not putting money in North America, in my opinion, because they feel that the uh, landscape is not friendly here to Chinese investment in natural resources. They do feel uh, the warmth of Aust Australian capitalism. So they're, they're investing in Australia. They're investing in Greenland. Um, whether or not they invest in the United States or Canada is up to the parliament and the Congress of those countries. I have no control over that. Well, it was nice to hear you bring up, uh, you know, Greenland Minerals. There's a company that we don't normally hear you reference, but now yeah. I want to move to rare earth elements. They also had uh, a couple of technologies that are patent pending for rare earth extraction. Can you talk to us a little bit about this or are you, uh, you know, are you, do the NDAs keep you from uh, telling our audience um, what you really know? Uh, the NDAs keep me from telling the audience the details, but let me say the con my conclusions are that rare element resources is ready to go. It's going to have, it's ready to adopt a separation technology. It has achieved a clean separation of a heavy rare earth concentrate that is free of, of radioactive contaminants and other interfering materials, as has UCOR. These two companies are now in the forefront of the processing revolution. They are ready to select the separation technology. All right, and I have one more question for you. Um, I was lucky enough to have dinner with you the Saturday before last. Uh, George Bach from Northern Minerals was hosting it. Can you tell me what conclusions you came out of that dinner with after meeting with George? Well, I, to be honest with you, my main conclusion was that the Australian market's telling us something. If you take away the two producers of rare earths, the two large producers, Molly Corp and Linus, it, the number one market cap in the rare earth space is Northern Minerals. There must be a reason for that. I am very, very optimistic about Northern Minerals. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Jack. It's always good to talk to you. Oh, thank you, Chris.